So in this lesson, we're going to start learning to name organic compounds that have functional groups in them, at least those that are required in this class. Now before you watch this video, you should probably watch an earlier video, a prerequisite video called Intro to Organic Nomenclature and Structural Formulas. And one word of caution here, if you're a college professor or college uh, student or even a high school student in another class, in another school perhaps, uh, I take some liberties with the naming system so I don't follow strictly the IUPAC rules. IUPAC stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So I try to simplify things a little bit just to make it easier on high school students to get a good start, a foundational start with organic chemistry. Now in terms of numbering a carbon chain, all of these functional groups, including this alkyl halide, are considered to have the same importance. But that's only for the numbering things. That is to say, if I have a double bond, a triple bond, a phenyl group, or benzene ring, or the uh, say a fluoro group or something, you're going to find the sum of all the numbers for the carbons on the chain to the, to the functional groups, to all the functional groups, the sum of the functional groups, the sum of those numbers, and number from the end of the chain that gives you the lowest numbers. That's the way that works up to and including these alkyl halides. After that, the numbering system kind of changes. All right, We're going to number to the most important functional group and not the sum of all the functional groups. All right, so if we have a simple carbon chain of uh, one, two, three, four carbons in length, okay, and we put a chlorine group right here, that's a chloro. When you're naming, it, naming it, um, an organic chain, you call that a chloro group. Okay, and that's a prefix. If you look on your list here, it shows you it's a chloro group because there's a dash after it, showing that it goes before the naming. So, meth, eth, pro, but, this is all single bonds, so this is a butane. And since the chlorine group, or chloro group, is either, if I'm counting from the right on number two, or if I'm counting from the left on number three, we want the lowest numbers overall, so that would be on number two, so this is two chloro. Then using all the information you had before about how to name these things, I'm going to give you a formula and try to name this compound then. I like to write down the name of the functional groups out here to keep up with it. If I number from the right-hand side, I get two for chloro, two for the ene or the double bond, and five for the methyl, the carbon side chain here, and that's a total of nine. So numbering from the right then, methyl's on two, and then the double bond's on four, and the chloro's on five, and that comes out to be 11, right? So we want a number from the right, the left-hand side because it gives us lowest numbers overall. So the prefixes are chloro and methyl. When you list those alphabetically, chloro comes before methyl. So I want chloro to be 2-chloro and methyl to be 5-methyl. And then we want the root name here. And then our double bond is going to be on number two, right? Mm -hmm. Two E. And since it's the last thing in the word, we're going to keep the E on the end of this one. This way, the words actually tell you what the structure is. All right, so let's try to name this one then.
So 14, 20, 29, 31, right? So we want a number from the left because overall the carbon locations of the carbons that gives us the lowest numbers overall to these functional groups for because in terms of numbering all of these functional groups had the same importance. Notice that when I had two chloro groups I numbered it twice. Okay? You have to number each chloro group. And so I get 21 numbering from the left. That's lower than 31 numbering from the right. So I'm going to number from the left. And so when I write the name, then I need to know what prefixes. I've got chloro and I've got ethyl prefixes. And chloro comes before ethyl. Even though both of them are going to have a dye on the front, okay, we're going to number for the uh, al alphabetically for the functional group itself, not for the prefix on the functional group that tells you how many you have. Chloro is going to come before ethyl. Um, let's see, oct is the main chain name. And then we've got two double bonds. So since we have um, two chloros, we're going to call that a dichloro. And both of those are on carbon number two, so that's two, two dichloro. We have two ethyls. Yeah, they're both on number two. Because they're on carbon two. You can't say one, two if they're both on two. You have to say two, two. Yeah, could be. So you want to number where that carbon is located. You, okay, for both of them. All right, they both get their own number. All right. Then ethyl is on three and four, so we're going to call that three, comma four, diethyl. Then oct, and then we've got a diene on four and six. Hooray! For double and triple bonds, you number the first carbon you come to where you encounter that functional group. Okay, so if I'm going from the left, one, two, three, four, we get to that double, first double bond on carbon number four. And we get to the second double bond on carbon number six, and that's why I use four and six. All right, so here's a, um, a structural name that I'm going to give you and let you write the structure itself. All right, so let's work on this one. So pent means there's five carbons. One, two, three, four, five. At the bends and ends, there are carbons in this skeletal structural drawing. Okay. So the, the, the skeletal drawing only shows the bonds between the carbons. You have to imply or infer where the, carbon, where the hydrogens are located, if there are any, and where the carbons are located. They are at the, bend, the carbons are at the bends and the, and the ends. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we've got iodo groups, two of them, at two and four. So if I'm going to start from the left, it doesn't matter. You can start from the right. Okay, you can number from the right or the left. doesn't matter. I'm going to start from the left. And on two, I'm going to have an iodo group. And on four, so that's two, three, four, I'm going to have an iodo group. And on number three, I'm going to have a methyl group. One, two, three, here's methyl, okay? And then on one and three, I'm going to have a diene. So one is right here, there's a double bond. And on two, three, on number three is a, di is a double bond. Okay, sounds like you guys are beginning to get a handle on it. All right. Methyl is one carbon. Since there's a carbon here, but we counted that in the chain, in the main chain, when we counted five carbons, pent, then we don't count that again for the side group. That's just one carbon. That's a meth, and side groups have a YL ending when it's a side chain of just carbons. Okay? All right, then. Now, what we said was, when we started here, that uh, up to this point, all of these functional groups have the same importance for numbering. After we get past all those, then we're going to number the chains so we get the lowest numbers overall to the most important functional group. So when we start with the alcohols here, we've got a number to the alcohol if that's the most important functional group on the chain and not these others. We'll number the others, but we're going to have the lowest number to that alcohol group if that's the most important functional group. Okay? So let's say I've got one, two, three, four, five. 
and I'm going to put the out well let's put the alcohol group on the end over here like this okay all right since there's no carbon here what what is on the end of this line now is an oxygen okay we're going to count this carbon starting with it here one two three four five six so that's a hex because there's no carbon there one two three four five six ends and bends okay and that's a hex the chain itself has all single bonds, so that's a, he a hexane. And the alcohol group has to be on the carbon number one. Okay, so that's hexane one all. Okay, now, in reality, the way you should name it using IUPAC rules is one hexanol. But that's sort of mixing up systems, and I want to keep it as simple as possible for right now. Every any any organic chemist would know what one hexane one all means. Okay, so even though when you get to college you're gonna to learn to name it one hexanol and then change it over to putting the numbers in the word later, let's don't sweat that today. Yeah, we drop the e on the ane because it's not no longer the end of the word. Okay, it's just like. Um, you, uh, when you say you have a grade of 70, okay? Well, if you are having somebody over for lunch, you drop the E, right? You may have a lunch with you, that's an E on the end, but when you say I'm having lunch, then you drop the E. So that's kind of the same thing here. Since there's not the end of the word, we drop the E. Okay, all right. So let me give you one then to name. All right, let's go about naming this one then. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons in the chain. So that means our main chain, our root chain, our parent chain name is oct. I want to number in this case, since I have an alcohol group now, I want to number so I get the lowest numbers overall to the alcohol groups, not to anything else. Because now, now we're into those functional groups where the numbering is to the most important functional group. Uh, so alcohols, if I'm not numbering from the right, alcohols are on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, and 5. From the, from the left, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Obviously, numbering from this end is going to be lower number. Since the alcohol groups are on the same numbers from both sides, okay, now we drop back to what we were doing before. Overall, which has the lowest numbers? Because it doesn't matter which end we number for the alcohol groups in this structure, we're going to number in a way that gives us the lowest numbers overall for all the, for the other functional groups. Does that make sense? Okay. So, let's see. If we number from the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Then we've got uh, a double bond on 1, a double bond and an alcohol group on 3. So, 3 is twice. Then I've got a phenyl group on 4. A double bond on five and an alcohol group on six and a bromine group on seven. Okay? And if I number from the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then I've got a bromine group on two, an alcohol group, and a double bond on three. So three is twice. Uh, nothing on four. On five, I've got a phenyl group and a double bond, so we're going to have five, five. And then on number six, we've got an uh, alcohol group. And then on number seven, we've got a double bond. So numbering from the left gives us a 29. Numbering from the right gives us a 31. So numbering from the left is what we want to do. All right, so let's see. We've got in. I've got three of these, three enes. I've got two alcohol groups, OL groups. I've got one bromo group, and that comes in front, so I'll put it like, write it like this, B-R-O-M-O -O with a dash after, and one phenyl group. Since the main chain is eight carbons, this phenyl group has a lower number of carbons, smaller number of carbons, so it becomes a prefix name. All right, so we got 
let's see, bromo, then phenol, then the main chain, then the dull bonds, or the enes, and the alcohols. Okay, so bromo is on number seven. Then we want the phenol group, which is on number four. Then we want the main chain, oct. Then we want the triple, uh, the double bonds. There's three of them. There's uh, there's one on number one and number three and number five, and that's triene. And then we've got the alcohol groups on uh, three and six, and that's two of them. So that's a diol. All right, so here's a name for you guys to work on. Doesn't really matter whether the bromo's on the top or the bottom. Now then, ketones are uh, one of a number of functional groups that contain what are called carbonyls, okay, or carbonyls. And that just means that in that carbon chain, one of those carbons in the chain is double bonded to an oxygen off the side, okay? Now, I want to show you an aldehyde while we're here before we start naming ketones, because ketones and aldehydes are very similar. Okay, so aldehyde is the next thing on the list. And notice that aldehydes also have a carbonyl or carbonyl. Okay? The difference and the only difference between an aldehyde and a ketone is an aldehyde's carbonyl is at the end of a chain. So if the carbonyl is at the end of a chain, that's an aldehyde. If the carbonyl is in the middle of the chain, that's a ketone. Okay? Now, if you look on this list, there are several other groups here that also have carbonyl or carbonyl side groups. All right, we'll get to those. For right now, I just want to show you the difference between an aldehyde and a ketone. A ketone is more important than an alcohol group. So if I have both an alcohol group and a ketone, you want a number, so you get the lowest numbers overall to the ketone, not the alcohol. So in terms of importance of these three functional groups I have on this carbon chain, Fluoro is the least important, alcohol is the next or middle in importance, and the ketone is the most important. So I want to number the chain so I get the lowest numbers overall to the carbon on which that carbonyl or ketone group is located. So starting from the left, that's on number three, or from the right, it's on number four. So I want a number from the left, okay? Then the fluoro group is a prefix, and that's on number four. Four fluoro. We've got six carbons in the chain. That makes it a hex. We have no double bonds or triple bonds, so that's a hexane. We've got an alcohol group on number five, and so the alcohol group is not as important as a ketone. We're going to write the ketone last in the name, since among the suffixes, it's the most important. And among the suffixes, you always write the most important last. So we're going to have alcohol next, which is on 5, 5, all. And then the ketone is on 3, so that's 3, on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a hept. There's two enes. There's one iron. There's a bromo. There's an alcohol, which is an OL, and a ketone, which is an O and E. 
Okay, so if we want a number so that we get the lowest numbers overall to the most important functional group, the ketone is the most important of the functional groups. It's more important than the alcohol than anything else. One, two, three, if I number from the left. One, two, three, four, five, number from the right. So we want a number from the left. That's the lowest numbers overall. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. So of our prefixes then, we've only got one prefix name. That's the bromo. And that's on number four. Then we get to the root name, het. We've got double bonds, triple bonds, alcohols, and ketones as suffixes. So uh, all of those, the least important is the double bond. And there's a double bond on one and three. So that's one, three, diene. There's a triple bond on number five, five, ine. There's an alcohol on number two, two, all. And there's a ketone on number three, three, on. Okay. All right, let me give you a name and let you write a formula then. All right, so uh, 5 butyl, there's the butyl group 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, meth, eth, prop, but, butyl. 7 fluoro, there's 7, there's the fluoro. Non is a 9 carbon chain. 1, 6 diene, there's 2 double bonds on 1 and 6. Has an alcohol on 5 here. And 3, 4, 6 trion. 3, 4, 6, there's the ketones. All right, now the next thing we're we'll going to look at then is the aldehyde. And aldehyde is like a ketone in that it has a carbonyl group or carbonyl group, but this carbonyl is on the end of a chain. So an aldehyde then just has a ketone group or aldehyde group or carbonyl group on the end. Okay, that's what makes it an aldehyde. One, two, three, four, that's butte. Okay, there's only single bonds, butane. And the ketone over here has to be on number one, correct? It can't be anywhere else. That's the most important functional group. It has to be on the end, so that has to be number one. So there's no reason to number this ketone. If the most important functional group is a ketone, and there's only one of them, it has to be on number one. It would be redundant to number it. Make sense? Okay, so that's butane out. Okay, if I understand your question, you're asking this. If I have this right here, now I've got two different aldehydes. Yeah. Now I have to number them. Okay? I mean, I suppose it's a bit redundant because you know it has to be on the first one and the last one, but the, the convention is that you number it when you, when you have more than one. This would be butane. One, two, three, four, so one and four, dial. At least that's the way we write it in here. All right, here's one for you guys to name for practice. All right, so here's the name for this formula. And here's the homework I'm assigning for tonight. Oh, I did leave the alcohol off, didn't I? Okay. And that's on one, two, three, four. In a, too much of a hurry. Four, all. And then we go to the three on. Okay. This is the most important functional group here. Okay. And that's a carboxyl group, a carboxylic acid group. So our carbon number one needs to be this one right here. One. They do. Three, four, five, six. So oil acids have to be at the end of the name. Okay. So we've got a hex 
main chain. Okay, we have a ketone right here on three. We've got two bromos. We've got an alcohol group, which is called an OL, and we have an aldehyde here on number six. So we will have to number this one because the, the carboxylic acid group or carboxyl group is more important than the aldehyde. So in this case, the aldehyde has to be numbered. Okay, I think I covered everything today. All right then. Uh, then we have we don't we only have we have only one prefix or two prefixes basically they're called it's calling it the dibromo is what we're going to call it. And they're on number fourth of number four, so we'll call that we'll call that four four dibromo. Then we've got the root name because all the other names or groupings on here are all suffixes. We don't have any double bonds or triple bonds, so it's a hexane. Let's see, then of the suffixes, we've got alcohols and aldehydes and carboxylic acids and um, ketones too. So of those, alcohol is the least important. That needs to come next. The alcohol is on five, five all. And then we've got uh, aldehydes and ketones and ketones would come next, so that's three on. And we've got an aldehyde on number six, six al. And then we come to the carboxylic acid group, which is called, I didn't write that down, but this is called an oic acid. Okay. Okay. All right, so I've got iodo groups here. Alcohol groups like this are suffixes, so that's an OL. Phenyl groups, if I have to, this chain here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this chain is longer than the, these two phenyl group chains or, or benzene ring chains. So uh, that means that this is the root parent or parent uh, for the whole structure. And these are side groups, so we'll call these phenols instead of benzenes. And then the double bond is called an ene. This is also an alcohol, OL. And then this all together is an oic acid. Okay? And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. <clears throat> so the main chain name is a hept. And this has to be carbon number one because this is the most important functional group. And so you number so that you get the lowest numbers overall to the most important functional group. Okay, so this has to be carbon number one. Okay, so now we can start putting together the name. Um, suffixes. We have iodo and phenyl suffixes and I comes before P. Even though this is going to be diphenyl, you don't alphabetize for the prefixes that go in front of those prefixes. Okay, So it's, it's alphabetized by iodo and phenyl, not by iodo and diphenyl. Okay, So we're going to say diphenyl, but we're alphabetizing according to the functional group name itself not the prefix on the functional group to indicate how many I have. So iodo comes before phenol, and I've got two iodos, so that's diiodo on both of, both of them on six. Six, six, diiodo. And then we've got a prefix for phenol on those, there's two of those on four and three, or three and four, so that's three, four, diphenol. Let's see then. Then we get to the root name. <coughs> Excuse me. And the root name is hept, or the parent chain name is hept. I've got a double bond here. That's on number four, so four ene. We've got uh, alcohol groups. 
two of them on 2 and 5. 2, comma, 5, all. And I think the last thing is the oic acid. I'm sorry, did I say? Yeah, I'm sorry, there's 3-en. You're right. And then oic acid. You're right, I should say diol here. Right there, diol. You're right. 2-5. I did write 2-5. I right, left off the die. Would you like to get me to give you a name and have you write a formula? Okay. Why not, he says. Good. Let's name this chemical. Oh, let's write the formula for this name of this chemical. Ethers are going to be a little bit different as far as naming is concerned, okay? With an ether, the ether functional group is the parent name. We're going to deviate a bit from what we've been doing because uh, we're going to keep this really, really simple, all right? And this is kind of like most common ethers follow this pattern anyway. So it'll, it'll, it'll make it easier for you if you're looking at the, most of the ethers you, you're going to find on the shelf somewhere. Um, the ether group is where you have any carbon chain, and then there's an oxygen in the chain, and then you've got uh, a, the carbon chain continuing after that. So it's like this is one kind of carbon chain, and this is another. So this symbol just means R for any carbon chain, and this is R prime. It might be R1 or R2 or something. That's fine. You know, a lot of different ways of numbering that. It depends on who's doing it, okay? So that's what an ether looks like. All right, but we're going to name this side over here like it's a side chain. So this is going to have a YL ending, and this is going to have a YL ending. You're simply going to name them alphabetically. Okay, so if I have one carbon over here and the ether there, and another carbon over here, that's methyl over here and methyl over there. Does that make sense? Well, alphabetically, that's the same thing, yes. So we could call this one of two things. We can either call this methyl, methyl ether or we can call it dimethyl ether okay if I have a two carbon chain on one end now this end is called not methyl but ethyl and ethyl comes before methyl. In this case, then, alphabetically, we're going to write this ethyl methyl ether. Okay? Hmm? Yeah, it's always, ether is always the parent name. Okay? And we're not going to put any other things on, on an ether to give you uh, some other name on the end of that. Okay, we'll keep the, ethers are going to be fairly simple. All right, because most of the ethers you encounter are going to be like that. All right? Okay, then. Why don't you name this one? So you need to call this ethyl, ethyl ether. Or diethyl ether or bat ether. Actually, nobody calls it bat ether. I just think it's kind of funny. Okay. All right. Um. <laughs> All right. Name this thing. Name this trucker. No, this is this is a carbon here, and that's a bond to an oxygen. Okay, so I've got a meth eth probe butte side, and I've got a meth eth side. Which one comes first? Butte. So this is butyl ethyl ether. First, the first chain, if you mean the chain on the left, one, two, three, four carbons. 
And then this, there's no carbon at the end of this line here because that's a bond to an oxygen. Okay? All right. So ethers are pretty simple, guys. All right? We're not going to make them extra, uh, unnecessarily complex. We're going to keep them pretty simple. Going next to the esters. All right? Now, I want you to think about esters in this way. I want you to think about esters in this way. Let's look at this structure right here. There's an ether side. Okay, see where the ether is, and there's a carbon chain over here. And there's a ketone side, where you've got a carbonyl and a chain over here. Does that make sense? A carbonyl group. All right. So, the ketone side is the parent side. The ether side is the side chain. You with me? The ketone side is the parent chain. Ether side is the side chain. And if you think about it, well, we're just naming all the side chains on an ether like they were side chains, right? Yes? So that's, that kind of keep, keeps things in the same thought process. So that if I have a carbonyl group here and I put an ether here, well, that's going to, a carbonyl next to an ether group is going to create an ester. And then I put a couple more carbons over here. Then this is the side chain. And if I have two carbons in a side chain, we call that a ethyl. Okay. And this is the ketone side. So I've got one, two, three, four carbons. <coughs> Meth, eth, prop, bute. So that's a bute. Okay, that's the side chain there. And a ketone is on, right? Or it would be on if it were ketone. It's just bute. All right? Because this suffix for the um, ester is OH. So, this, this, all this together then is the OH. This would be called ethyl bute. Since there's only single bonds in this chain and no other uh, groups coming off of there, that's a butane. And then O8 is the end of the name. Ethyl butyl O8. All right, let's give you another one here. Name this chemical. So on this, in this structure, even though this chain over here on the right is shorter than the chain on the left, this is the parent chain because it's the side of the ester that contains the carbonyl group or the ketone group. Okay? So this is the parent chain and this is the side chain. One, two, three, four, meth, eth, pro, bute. That's a butyl side chain. And then this is meth, eth, pro. There's no double bonds in this parent chain, propane. And then this functional group is O8 or the ester group is called O8 butyl propanoate. Alright, let me give you a name. Let's write a formula. So write the structural formula for this organic chemical. Okay, so the amide is a carbonyl attached on the end of a chain to uh, an amine group. An amine group is exactly the same here as here, but when you put the amine next to the carbonyl or carbonyl group, then it's called an amide. Alright? So if I have this many carbons, one, two, three carbons, I'm going to put a ketone or a carbonyl group on there, and I'm going to put an amine group on here, then I've got an amide. Okay, meth, eth, pro, pro, only single bonds on the chain, propane, amide, propane amide. Okay, let's name this one. Let's see here, we've got a phenyl group here. 
looking like. That's a prefix. Here's our amide over here. Got two alcohol groups, those are suffixes OL. I've got a double bond, which is an ene suffix, and a triple bond, which is a uh, an iron suffix. Actually, there's not going to be any end on there because we're going to put the amide on the end. Let's see, have I left anything off? I think I got it. And then I've got, uh, this will be number one because the most important functional group is the amide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That makes it a hep chain. So, let's see. Of uh, the pre, we only got one prefix, that's a phenol. <coughs> that's on number three. Uh, and then we get to the main chain, hep. And we've got uh, of the suffixes, <coughs> amides the most important. Alcohols will be next. Ines, then, and enes. So we're going to write enes first. <coughs> Excuse me. Double bonds on one, two, three. Triple bond is on one, two, three, four, five. The alcohols are on one, two, three, four, two, and four. Two, four diol, correct. And then amide. Okay. All right, let's write a formula from this. All right, let me go over this one. You can keep working if you're still working on it. Five carbons because I've got the parent chain of pent. One, two, three, four, five carbons at each of the corners and the ends. Ends and bends. Uh, I've got iodo groups, two of them, iodines, iodo, two iodo groups on four and four. One, two, three, four. Uh, I've got a propyl group on number two, so I'm numbering from the left, one, two. Propyl has meth, eth, prop, meth, eth, prop. I've got uh, a double bond on two, one, two, so the double bond has to be right here. And the amide has to be on number one because it's the most important functional group. So I've got to have a carbonyl group next to and a mean group. That might, did I get everything on there? Yep, I think so. Yep. So means just mean I have an NH2 group on there. Okay. So how many carbons in this chain? One carbon in this chain. So this is a Meth, there's only single bonds, methane, amine, methanamine. Okay. So I've got, if I've got an amide group on there and an amine group, um, you have to number in a way that gives you the lowest numbers overall to the amine group, but then you'll also have to number the amide. Okay. So I'll put my amine group here. I'm going to put an amide over here. And let's throw a few other things in here. How about a ketone and a phenol and I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's anything I haven't used lately. I haven't used an alcohol recently, so let's use an alcohol. Put an alcohol right here. Okay? So let's name this one. Work with a neighbor if you need to. Okay, so this is the amide group and this is the amine group. The amine group is more important. We've got a number from this end of the chain because it gives us the lowest numbers overall. One, two, three to the amine. And we just numbered everything else. This is an alcohol group, OL, phenyl group here. 
The phenyl group, we're going to call it phenyl instead of benzene because the most important functional group is the amine. That's more important. The main chain has to include the most important functional group. If the main chain includes the most important functional group, then this benzene ring has to be a phenyl group, not a benzene. Okay? This is a ketone. This is an amide. So, four phenyl. Phenyl's on number four. One, two, three, four. Hex, six carbon chain here. There's no double bonds or triple bonds, so it's a hexane. Alcohol is on number two here. The ketone is on number five. One, two, three, four, five. The amide is on number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's the anide. Um, and the amine is on number three. One, two, three. And that's how you write out that name. So let me give you a name and let you write a formula. All right, so we've got a hep, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. Bromo is on number five, one, two, three, four, five. Elbon ene is on number two, one, two, there's the Elbon. Four, six, two, uh, four and six, there's two ketones. One, two, three, four, there's a ketone. Five, six, there's a ketone. Two and three are two amines. One, two, there's an amine. And three, there's an amine. So that's the structure. And so, from, for this class, we were asked to do this homework problem. Let's see, looks like we have, this would be a carboxylic acid group. This is oic acid over here. And we've got a ketone here which we're going to give the ending name of O-N. We've got two bromo groups. Those are prefix names. Got an alcohol group. That's a suffix name of O-L. And I've got an aldehyde over here, and that suffix name is A-L. Then I've got, since this is the most important of those functional groups, wait a minute, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, then we're going to start with number, this will be our carbon number one. Two, three, four, five, and six. So that's hex is the chain. Okay, we have no double bonds or triple bonds, so that'd be a hex. We could just go and say it's a hexane. Okay. All right then. Let's see. Of our, we've only got one kind of prefix name that's bromo, but we've got two of those, so that's dibromo, and it's both of those are on four, so that'd be four, comma. 4 dibromo and then we get to our root name because that's the only prefix we've got prefix and suffix and the root name goes in the middle so hexane is going to go in the middle then of the suffix names the least important is the alcohol no yeah alcohol so that's uh, number 5 5 all and then next in importance uh, would be the ketones, so that would be three ketone is own, three own. Then the next in importance is the aldehyde, that's on number six, six al. And then we have oic acid, right? How did we do? We have a lot of smiles, a lot of frowns. Okay. All right, here's how we're going to grade this, folks. Each of these things we put in, each of these parts is going to be worth a point. So 4, comma, 4, those are all points. Dash, di, promo, dash, x, aim, dash, 5, dash, all, dash, 3, dash, on, dash, 6, dash, l. Technically, there's, uh, there's, doesn't, it's not required there to be a dash in here, so I'm not going to count a point for that. Let's go to oic and then acid. No, that one has to be on one, so it's superfluous to put a one there. You count off one point, they put a one in there. Okay. 
All right, so let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 23 points.